crazy rock and roll facts that everyone should know. The first time John Lennon and George Harrison took acid, it was given to them by the band's dentist, John Riley, without their knowledge or consent. He slipped it into their coffees after a dinner party at his house and then told them not to leave. Unaware that they'd been spiked, Lennon and Harrison thought he was trying to keep them for an orgy, so they escaped to a nightclub. In 1975, David Bowie was on such an astronomical amount of cocaine during the recording of his album, Station to Station, that he could not remember recording it. When asked about the studio he recorded in Bowie stated, I know it was in LA because I've read it was. When Led Zeppelin were set to perform in Denmark in 1970, Ava von Zeppelin, a relative of the Zeppelin creator, threatened to sue the band for using her family name and for the cover of the band's debut album. To avoid any controversy, Led Zeppelin performed in Copenhagen as The Knobs. A month prior to his 11th birthday, American actor Peter Fonda accidentally shot himself in the abdomen and nearly died. Years later, while taking LSD with John Lennon and George Harrison, he mentioned the incident saying, I know what it's like to be dead. This inspired the Beatles' song, She Said, She Said. Keith Richards once snuck into Chuck Berry's dressing room and started playing his guitar. When Berry came in and saw what Richards was doing, he proceeded to punch him in the face. In 2008, Prince covered Radiohead's Creep at Coachella. Someone uploaded a mobile video of it to YouTube. Prince quickly made YouTube remove it. After finding out about the blocking, Radiohead's lead singer, Tom York, said, Well, tell him to unblock it. It's our song. Bruce Springsteen had 11 number one albums in the US, but never had a number one single in the US. The closest he came was 1984's Dancing in the Dark, which hit number two. In 1967, when walking into a bar in Liverpool, England, Jimi Hendrix and his band were told they weren't welcome by a bartender who said, Sorry mates, we can't serve your sword in here. Hendrix thought it was because he was black, but actually it was because they were mistaken for circus clowns. In 1978, Rolling Stones guitarist Keith Richards was convicted of heroin possession in Canada, where he was ordered by the judge to play a benefit concert at the Canadian National Institute for the Blind. The Monkees named their 1968 film Head, so that if they ever released a second film, they could use the tagline, From the People Who Gave You Head. It was also co-written and produced by a young Jack Nicholson. Ozzy Osbourne took acid every day for two years just to see what would happen. He vowed never to take it again after the horse incident. Anthony Kiedis of the Red Hot Chili Peppers held such a grudge with Mike Patton of Faith No More because he thought Patton was imitating his own frontman style that he made sure Patton's other band, Mr. Bungle, were canceled from festivals that RHCP were headlining. Lemmy Kilmister made more money from the royalties he received by co-writing Ozzy Osbourne's hit song, Mama I'm Coming Home, than from his 15 years in Motorhead. Brenda Lee was just 13 years old when she recorded Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree and had 47 U.S. chart hits during the 1960s, the most by a woman, and surpassed only by Elvis Presley, The Beatles, and Ray Charles. The legendary jazz singer Ella Fitzgerald once forgot the words to Mack the Knife when performing it live in Berlin and completely improvised the lyrics. She won a Grammy for the performance. Jerry Garcia played the steel guitar on the Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young 1970 hit, Teach Your Children. He did it in exchange for them helping the Grateful Dead improve their vocal harmony. The Beatles' song, You Know My Name, look up the number on the Let It Be album, features a saxophone part played by the late Brian Jones of the Rolling Stones. Greg Lake of Emerson, Lake & Palmer wrote his first song, Lucky Man, at the age of 12. Twelve years later, in 1970, it charted in multiple countries and is still in heavy rotation on classic rock stations today. Jimi Hendrix was once invited to play with Cream alongside Eric Clapton. In the middle of the show, Clapton walked off stage. He was found in the back shaking angrily and smoking a cigarette. When asked what was wrong, he simply replied, You never told me he was that fucking good. Ozzy Osbourne joined Black Sabbath in 1968 after Tony Iommi saw his card on a notice board in a Birmingham music shop which simply said, Ozzy Zig needs gig, has own PA. Faith no more. Singer Mike Patton has the biggest vocal range of pop music, with a full six octaves, passing others such as previous record holders Axl Rose, Mariah Carey, or David Lee Roth. 
In 1998, Liam Gallagher was banned for life from Cathay Pacific Airlines after an incident of air rage over a scone. Ginger Baker, drummer of the 60s band Cream, claims that he got addicted and came off heroin 29 times during his life. Ramon singer Joey Ramon was born with a parasitic twin growing out of his back, which was incompletely formed and had to be surgically removed. The King of Cool, Dean Martin, bootlegged liquor, worked in a steel mill, served as a croupier in a speakeasy, and was a blackjack dealer, all before the age of 15. At 15, he turned to boxing. Out of his 12 matches, Martin said that he won all but 11. Dave Garn of Depeche Mode became so consumed by his stage persona and drugs that he believed he might actually be a vampire, and once attempted to feast on a journalist's neck. He was so committed to this identity that he slept in a coffin, which he even shipped to South America for a tour. Iggy Pop was once beaten up by a local biker gang during a show in Michigan. Undeterred, he returned to the stage and finished the rest of his set. The next day, on a local radio station, he dared the gang to show up at his next gig. Black Sabbath's debut album in 1970 began with the sound of rain and a distant church bell. 43 years later in 2013, their final album ended with the sound of rain and a distant church bell. Barry White spent four months in jail for stealing $30,000 worth of Cadillac tires when he was 16. While behind bars, he heard Elvis Presley's It's Now or Never, which he stated inspired him to become a singer. Chuck Berry wrote the song You Never Can Tell, which is the soundtrack to the dance sequence in Pulp Fiction. While he was incarcerated in federal prison, he was jailed for transporting a 14-year-old girl across state lines. Louis Armstrong didn't receive formal musical training until he was arrested for firing a pistol at age 11. In there, the music teacher, Peter Davis, taught him how to play the bugle and cornet. Armstrong said that was when he and music got married. In 2008, singer Boy George was arrested and convicted for falsely imprisoning a male escort after chaining him to a radiator and beating him with a chain. He was sentenced to 15 months in jail, but was released in four for good behavior. While recording the album Rumors, the members of Fleetwood Mac said that cocaine was more of a necessity than a pleasure and seriously considered thanking their drug dealer in the album credits. In 1984, Steven Tyler heard an old Aerosmith song on the radio and didn't recognize it due to memory loss from years of drug use. He suggested to the band that they record a cover version. Joe Perry told him, it's us, head. At least you can truly say that Steven Tyler is a big Aerosmith fan. When John Denver's song, Rocky Mountain High, first became a hit, some radio stations banned it because they thought it was about drugs. He convinced them that it was about how he felt when out in nature. Guitarist Dave Mustaine was fired from his band for drug abuse, alcoholism, and aggressive behavior. He went on to form his own band, Megadeth, which would go on to sell 25 million albums worldwide. The band that fired him, Metallica. The song I Put a Spell on You by Screamin' Jay Hawkins was supposed to be a ballad, but during a recording session, Hawkins screamed and grunted through the whole song because he was drunk. It was his most successful recording and is in the Hall of Fame's 500 songs that shaped rock and roll. Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody had an earlier alternative title. Found on draft lyrics which sold at auction for a whopping $1.38 million, the title was originally written as Mongolian Rhapsody. Merle Haggard was a 20-year-old prisoner at San Quentin when he saw Johnny Cash play his first concert for inmates in 1958. Haggard said it helped turn his life around and inspired him to be a country artist. While the Eagles were recording their Hotel California album, they had to stop recording on numerous occasions because Black Sabbath was in the same studio and were so loud the sound was coming through the walls. 